Hello and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're going to be looking at the coloured peanut chart infographic. And I just came up with the peanut name at the last minute because I realised that it resembles a peanut. Pretty cool, huh? I want to apologise also for the late entry. Um, coupled with ISP issues and two fake issues, has put me back, has set me back a lot. And also for the color theory tutorial issues that set me back also, but I expect that to be out in the next two or so days. So those that are waiting for the color tutorial, color theory tutorial, expect that in a couple of days. And this was, or this is going to be, or supposed to be a spin off to that, but because of the delays, it will have to come before and the color theory come afterwards. So. The canvas size for this is 1700 by 1700 as always. I've got this peanut shape here just to help guide me, but you won't need this for the tutorial. But it's just for size issues for you, you'd be able to go through and do it any size. And I have my colors here. There are icons for this tutorial and there are tutorial and there are, there is a font that you're going to be using. So I'll leave those in the description. Let's get straight into it. There is a slight, I think there's a slight gradient on this also. Yeah, it's a slight one. Very subtle. Okay then, so this I'm going to use this as my guide. But what we're going to do here is create three circles. And I'm going to give the circles a radical, this radical purple. Just so that we can see it. One circle here. Well, four circles really. One circle here. I'm going to have one at the top and one at the bottom. I'm going to give these top and bottom ones a lower color here. Okay, then. Now we're going to have to zoom in here because this, this part is pretty. This part is important that we get this part right and precise. Even for this tutorial, we have to get it precise. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to make sure that the circle's edges just touch the edges of the purple. So the orange and the purple edges just touch, just enough to touch. No, yeah. I want to get that as best as you can. Good. And then for the bottom one, we're going to apply the same sort of thing. We just want the edges to touch. And that looks good. This looks good. Okay then. Next, what we're going to do is going to activate that Bezier tool. You can use B. Uh, or you can go to Bezier to your toolbox and we are going to create a shape that cuts through each one of these edges. Good. Make sure it goes through the edges as best it can. Again, mine's not perfect, but you have the time to make yours perfect. Then we're going to color this thing purple. I'm going to get rid of the stroke and I'm going to bring it down below the orange so we can get to see our peanut shape already. Then I'm going to hold shift and select the two circles along with the shape that we just made. I'm going to press control shift and plus, which is the same thing as going to path and intersection. Good. So we have this. Next, we're going to use the orange. I'm going to select the peanut shape. And we're going to control shift and minus, which is the same thing as going to path and difference. And we're going to do the same for the bottom. Control shift and minus sign. Okay, I still got some problems here. Let me just go and check it up a bit. Shift and minus sign. This is why it's important that you get the, the edges right, but I'm gonna, yeah. Shift and minus, so let's go out of it. Control shift and minus sign. Okay, so we have what looks like our peanut. Not as smooth as I would have liked it to, but I can adjust this later on. But you have more time to make yours smooth and look like there is no interruption in the curve because that's the idea of this. You don't want the curve to look like it's been interrupted. Okay, so I'm going to delete this now. And we have a peanut shape. 
good now we're going to insert it we're going to insert this so I'm going to duplicate it give it a color of orange using the dropper tool which I press D to select you can get the dropper tool down here select the orange and then I'm going to inset this thing and I'm going to this in, inset you can find in path and inset which is control and left parentheses I'm going to inset this a few times to get a shape that looking like this this is good so when you get a shape that's when you get looking sort of like this 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 sort of shape then you know that your inset is finished the inset tends to distort the nodes that create the circular shape so you may have to go in and create another circle in fact you will have to go in and do this so we're going to create a circle we're going to give the circle blue just so that we can tell it apart from the other things here and then we're going to duplicate this circle carry it over here then we're going to duplicate them and move them up a bit because we're going to need these later to create our guides let's bring this down bring this to the side slightly and bring this to the side slightly let me just reduplicate them the new positioning okay then I'm going to select all three of them and press control alt and plus sign which is the same thing as going to path and intersect so if you intersect them okay Okay then, so we've got this and we're going to select the two of these now and we're going to use difference which is path and difference or control shift and minus sign and we have this relative shape here which looks okay. I think this shape looks okay. Yeah. Okay then, next, just going to scroll this down a bit, next what we want to do is that we want to create some guides so I'm going to turn on the snap toolbox and I'm going to select this box here which is snap center origins and then I'm going to activate the bezier tool and it's going to snap to the middle of this and I'm going to pull it up whoops let's go again I'm going to pull this up good then I'm going to activate the Bezier tool again, find the snap here and pull it up. Great. And then I'm going to select the both of them holding shift, go to object and click object to guide. So I want these to look like guides, so they go straight down. Great. If our guys option open if your guys is not showing you can hit shift and the straight line that goes up on your keyboard is right next to your backward slash or it's on the same key as your backward slash and that will toggle in showing it or you can go to view and toggle these guides up here so view guides good Next, I'm going to carry these circles down somewhat so that they fit near the center of this. Good. And then we're going to snap to look for the center. And we're going to hold down control so that we get a 45 degree angle here. This is 45. Angle 90, 30, 60. I think it's a uh, 60, maybe a 60 degree angle. You can check it afterwards, but we're just gonna hold control and that will carry it down like this. Then we're gonna duplicate this, click it again, hold control, 
and we're going to pull it into oh better yet hold just gonna invert it right here at the top using the invert tool make sure both of them are selected and snap them to the middle then we're going to duplicate this and snap it to the middle and we're going to select them all and then go to object object to guides so we have our guides right here and this is important because it's going to help us to cut this thing up evenly so what we're going to do now is follow the guides with our snap tool on making sure that the snap tool nodes is on i think this one is it snap cost nodes and rectangular corners yeah that's it and this is going to help us to cut this up into the shapes that we need and we just have to let the snapping tool do the work for us good and then we can duplicate this select the shape that you created hit Control shift and star which is the same thing as Control shift and intersect i'm going to give this a color i'm going to give this a color of gray actually good then you're going to select this up here using the snapping tool to help us good I'm going to duplicate this control shift and star and we're going to give this an orange and then you're just going to use this repeat the process create the shape duplicate control shift and intersect Hold D, we're going to select, um, this really should be purple, you know, so I'm going to select the purple one. I'm going to change the color in a second. Good, I'm going to do the same on this side. Now you may be saying, why if it's the same circles, then why not just duplicate these and invert them? It's just that honestly, when I find I do these things, they, the size doesn't always become the same. They're not always perfectly symmetrical, so they leave spaces in between. So it's probably better that you just repeat the process to get the cleanest look. Unless you're absolutely precise and you've made sure that both sides are symmetrical, that may not be the best idea to get the look that you're looking for. And you may have to go in between and, and do a lot of inside work and um, fixing up of, of, of um, edges that don't meet up. So it's probably the best to just do it using the this side as well, because you know this side is is going to be optimized. Okay, the next one we're going to pick is orange. We're going to duplicate this. Oopsie, duplicate that. Intersect. So you have the orange here, and last we're going to do the two middles. Duplicate. I did it. Did it, did it create anything? No, I didn't create it. Sorry. It's gonna do the two middles. Click, 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 and click. Select you. And duplicate. Select you. Intersect. And I'm gonna click the green down here. And for the last one. Select them. Good. Duplicate and intersect. I'm going to select this blue. So we have a shape right here. I'm going to carry it down a little bit. Select this. Carry it up. Delete. Don't need this anymore. Hold down Shift and the up button. This up bracket. Oh, it's not a bracket but it's um i need to find out the name of that that key what do they call that key i'm gonna find out the exact name of it and then get back to you guys so i'm sure i'm gonna have to call it out again so we have these they all have strokes get rid of the strokes and we have what looks like our shape so you see that it's taking it's taking shape now 
let me just reference with the other with the one I made earlier to make sure that the color is in the right place orange and purple so now I'm gonna have to flip these create this make this orange make this purple make this orange make this purple good okay so now that we've done the insets and we've done our circles and created our guides and made our segments I'm gonna move on to the gradients and the shadows so first up I'm going to activate our guys once more. Select this and duplicate it and press it right here. So we get a straight line and then I'm going to go into object, object guides. You know, this guy looks kind of weird. Let me not do it that way. Bring it down a bit. Looks like I've moved up slightly. Okay then, so we have this here and we want to get rid of our guides and we're going to cut these in half. So I'm going to duplicate this, duplicate this and duplicate this one more time, select it. So the two of them selecting, holding shift and going to go to path difference. Good. Then I'm going to duplicate it once more, select this and I'm going to go to path and no division sorry not difference division what division is supposed to do is to cut this in half so we have two halves right here let's get rid of what's underneath it and the same for here let's get rid of what's underneath it right. this one we're going to make sure that this one is the lighter gray and then this one I'm going to make it the deeper gray using the gradient I'm going to put it up and here we are gradient and just put it up oh we want this gradient to be a linear gradient so I'm just gonna put it up from here and Let's take off the snap tool because it's getting in the way right now. Pull this down a bit. And we're going to apply the same sort of thing. Let's see if we can get this looking a bit more on the lighter gray side of life. There we are, that's much better. Good, I'm gonna apply the same things going to press G to get going to our gradient activate the same gradients pull it down and put this up look like there's a fold great next we're going to create a circle let's give this circle this blue so that we can tell it from the other things then we're going to put this underneath all of the elements Try to see that the edge of the circle touches this. Make it a bit bigger. Okay. Good. Then I'm going to duplicate it. Try to fit the circle right here. And we're going to subtract. Oh. We're going to use a difference. We can go to path and difference here or control shift and minus sign. Good, then I'm gonna create and make this black. I'm going to cut it about here. Good, and then bring this down slightly. Duplicate this, I'm gonna have to get rid of this here. And I'm going to flip it and bring this under great so we have this it's going to be our shadow control shift and f you can right click and go to fill and stroke or you can go into object and go to fill and stroke to find it and we're going to blur this ever so slightly then we're going to use the gradient tool And 
bring this up slightly so it looks like but I just need to carry the blur down a bit more yeah so it looks like it's can carry that even a bit further down good so it looks like it is um and get the value of this that the paper is lifting from the ground I'm gonna do this too whoops paste that value right here apply the same gradient using G I'll go into gradient Great. So it looks like that paper is lifting off the ground. Could even reduce the opacity of it slightly. Awesome stuff. And we have our fold effect. Then we're gonna use this, the line that we created earlier. I'm gonna duplicate it and put it on this side also. Lift it to the top. Good. we're going to need that for our text so we have our shadow and gradients so let's add our icons and text like I mentioned at the beginning of the tutorial I use open sans to create mine my text and just go back and Okay, the green's at the top and the blue's at the bottom. Okay, let's do that. And let's go back and just copy them. I'm just gonna copy them and paste them in there because this process tends to take a bit of time. Let's add our icons. Great, this looks good. And then we're going to move on and just add the text. Copy. Put it here and move them so that they match up. Okay, I'm gonna have to adjust it a little bit. Self, yes, All right, that looks better. Okay, then, so we have it here. Let's add our background. And to go to this, we're going to go to our fill and stroke dialog box, which you can find object fill and stroke. Right click, go to fill and stroke, or you can hit control shift and F. Mine was open already. And then I'm going to go and select stripes one to one black. And it will be black because it doesn't have anything next to it. If it's white, it will put white next to it, like so. Good, with that, we're going to just put this underneath, lower it to the bottom, then raise it by one. So it's above our gradient background. And then we're gonna bring down the opacity to about 3.2, that looks good. And I duplicate my Lugu.
and then lastly I'm going to add the text infographic peanut chart let me just increase the size of this to about 32 no walk it a bit higher to like 56 okay color peanut chart Okay, this looks like the end of the tutorial. If you like the tutorial, you can go and check out my other infographic tutorials, like and subscribe. You know, don't be afraid to leave a comment if you have a request or if you're having some problems. If things don't make as much sense or you tried something and it didn't work out, you know, I'll be happy to answer your your queries as to the best of my ability. The font is Open Sans Condensed. And I'll leave that as well as the icons used in this tutorial in the blog post that you'll find in the description on the YouTube page. Also, you can find me on Google Plus. You can find me on Twitter also. And you can also find me on DeviantArt if you're looking there. As well as Facebook. So, look after yourselves until I see you again. Look out for the color theory tutorial that's coming in the next two days. Get up and design a new dawn. Later.